PDF that I had shared, and there are few interesting things that you can observe in this in this PDF. One is some interesting piece of information. One is that in the whole periodic table, if you see, only eleven are guesses. Do you see this? Mm. So out of the discovered one twenty elements, only eleven are guesses. So this is one piece of information which is interesting. Another thing that we'll have to of course so we will study this in detail the intermolecular forces between the gases are the weakest any doubt about this no okay i'll just give you a brief intro introduction so we understand that the mass is measured in kg this is the mks unit of uh, mass we have already done stoichiometry we will be using this again and again i will just spend 5 minutes to explain this to you so the number of moles is equal to mass in gram upon molar mass so what this means is So, for example, let's take a very simple example: uh, oxygen molecule. So, oxygen molecule is a uh, 32 gram per mole. Am I correct? Mm. Any doubt about this? No. So, oxygen gas. If I have say uh, 64 gram, or let us say, let us complicate the things a bit further. If I have 128 grams of oxygen, and somebody asks me how many moles of oxygen gas I have. So number of moles would be given by the mass of uh, oxygen that I have divided by the molar mass of uh, oxygen. Any doubt about this? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the formula that will will be used again and again. So please don't have any confusion about this. Are we clear about this? Yeah. Okay. Then this is another very simple conversion that the number of moles is equal to number of molecules upon Avogadro's number. Any doubt about this? No. We understand that Avogadro's number. I'm using a very loose definition of Avogadro. This is Avogadro's number. Now let us assume that I have the number of oxygen molecules that I have is a 24 into 10 raised to power 23 molecules of of oxygen. Then if somebody asks me how many moles of oxygen I have, I will just divide it by the number of uh, the Avogadro's number, and I'll have four moles of oxygen. Any doubt? No. This is something that uh, you will understand in detail. This is something that you will understand in detail. Twenty-two point four liter. When you see mm -hmm. this lecture, when you see this lecture, when you see this lecture, uh, this uh, old STP, new STP, molar volume. So, if you see the literature, if you read books, some books will say twenty-two point four liter is the molar volume. Some will say twenty-two point seven liter. Some will say twenty-four point four liter. So we'll try to understand what is this confusion in this molar volume when we look at this lecture. Mm -hmm. This is one thing we are clear till here. Yeah. Okay. So this part, these three, these three formulas, we should be very clear. Should I go ahead? Are we comfortable till? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be using this a lot. We'll be using this a lot in the physics as well as in chemistry, in both the topics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll just show you a definition because that some day or the other you will require this. So. Let us spend some time to understand this. Uh, at least try to understand this funda of uh, old STP and new STP. And just to add to the confusion, there is something called NTP also. <laughs> so we'll try to <laughs> we'll spend some time here also. So don't worry. I'll, I'll provide you all the information. It depends upon you. What I'll suggest is you make a page, and you know you keep uh, noting the definitions on this page. And whenever you are confused, you just refer to this page. Okay. okay. So. For example, in Maharashtra board, in Maharashtra board, when they say STP, what they mean is they are talking about zero degrees Celsius. They are talking about one atmosphere, and they say that the molar volume would be twenty-two point four liters. Any doubt till here? No. Let us try to understand this again. What the definition says is that if you take one mole of say oxygen gas hmm. at zero degrees Celsius, one atmosphere. See, basically, in these gas laws, you will require these four things again and again: the number of moles, the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. So these would be the four conditions that would be required again and again. So I have taken one mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius at one atmosphere, and the molar volume would be twenty-two point four liter. Mr. Vandika, are we clear? Yeah. This is better. What is called the old STP? Why is it called old STP? Because let us see here. See, this is the organization IUPAC, which is uh, the you know the formal body for chemistry. Now they have given a new definition. 
in this new definition what they have said is that the pressure should be one bar are we clear yeah so rather than one atmosphere the new stp says that the pressure should not be one atmosphere it should be one bar and when one bar is taken the molar volume becomes 22.71 liter are we clear yeah so old stp new stp 0 degree celsius one atmosphere can you please note this down one mole yeah 22.4 liter 0 degree celsius one bar one mole 22.7 liter progresses we will understand what is ntp but right now this should be enough and of course another thing that we need to understand is then what is the difference between one atmosphere and one bar basically what is the relation how both of these are related that will understand just in 2 minutes are we clear till here yeah okay so this is about the mass then we come to the volume and this is the conversion and what i always recommend students is 1 liter is equal to 1 decimeter cube 1 milliliter is equal to 1 centimeter cube these are the basic definitions that they need to remember are we clear till here yeah baki we understand that 1 liter is equal to 1000 ml that is pretty easy to understand hmm. but uh, we should be very clear about these conversions are we okay yeah now here comes the pressure so pressure we understand force per unit area so the si unit is a pascal newton per meter square is called pascal are we clear yeah so 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter square is equal to 1 kg per meter second square are we okay this is a question which we did in uh, dimensional analysis also mlt mm -hmm. now here things become interesting the bar is now replacing the standard atmosphere as a most convenient unit of pressure so now one bar so historically one atmosphere has been used but now what is suggested is that you start using one bar one bar is equal to 10 to the power 5 pascal can you note this down yes yeah. and here comes the relation between one atmosphere and the number of bars so one atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 bar this is a this is something that we will be using in physics as well as in chemistry so in uh, physics there is kinetic theory of gases that is one of the chapter that we will be doing for example in maharashtra board in class uh, i think in class 12th they do i don't remember in uh, isc where uh, when do they do so when we do this uh, kinetic theory of gases again this is the conversion that we will be looking at is there one thing any doubt no so that is why i am suggesting so make a sheet of paper write all the conversion on this sheet of paper would you be able to do that yeah okay then temperature is easy so that it doesn't become becomes too easy look at this uh, in class 9th class 10 they used to say that uh, kelvin is equal to celsius plus 273 but now if you see In exact terms, there is a point one five also. Is there one thing I need out here? No. So density is equal to mass per unit volume. There is another uh, kind of uh, numerical that you would have done in uh, stoichiometry class tenth ICSI. This is another numerical. This is another formula that uh, you would have studied. That vapor density is equal to molar mass into two, or molar mass is equal to twice of vapor density. Actually, when we, we when we were doing stoichiometry. This is the formula that we had done. If you remember, are we okay till here? Yeah. There is another definition that you can note. This is pretty easy. Diffusion. Basically, it is the volume of gas diffused in a certain time. This is the rate of diffusion. Are we okay till here? Yeah. So basically, what I am trying to tell you, Avantika, that in the last uh, say around ten uh, fifteen minutes, mm. whatever we have discussed is basically what we will use to understand gas laws. Are we okay? Yeah. by the end of this lecture by the end of this lecture our target is to do these questions question number 5 do you see these uh, sub parts from a to yeah. l a to l these are the question that we plan to do yeah. so this would be you would be doing as homework one or two questions will do here mm -hmm. so But this is what we target. 
Now, in the previous uh, lecture, we have already done Boyle's law. Boyle's law is pretty easy. That uh, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So, basically, if you take this piston, pretty easy to visualize. If you take this piston, see again and again, I am trying to tell you there are four things that you need to constantly track. So, when they talk about this piston, what they are saying is that the number of moles are fixed. Mr. Sidi, what is the second thing which is fixed? The Monica, the temperature, Shabash. So, boil law, temperature is fixed, and what is the second thing which is fixed, Mr. Sidi? Number of moles. So, we find we need to find the relation between pressure and volume. So, pretty simple. If I have a piston at one atmosphere and I increase the pressure, when I increase the pressure, the volume decreases. So, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Is there one thing I need out? No. This can also be written as that PV is constant. Is there one thing I need out? No. So, if my first stage is P1, V1 is equal to constant. So, for example, let me try to explain. If this is my stage 1 and this is my stage 2, so the product of pressure into volume is equal to the product of pressure into volume in the second stage from state 1 to state 2 because number of moles and the temperature remains constant. Is there any doubt about this? No. Uh, just to just to tell you how this uh, thing specific thing works, let us try to do one numerical so that you guys don't fall to sleep. So P1, V1, if you can note this down, Boyle's law says P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Just note this down. Okay. You should cram this definition. You should cram this definition of Boyle's law. For a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, this is how it is written. The pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to volume. Usually, what students do is they write the pressure jo hai, wo volume ke inversely proportional. Hai. But that is not what Boyle's law is. Total Boyle law, kya bolta hai? the number of moles and the temperature have to be kept constant. Only then the pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Is there one thing any doubt? No, sir. So, the first thing is definition. The second thing is graph. And the third thing is numerical. How do the graphs look like? This is how beta, how the graphs look like. I'll spend before I spend time on these graphs. These are the three graphs that we'll have to understand. They can be ind independently asked in MCQs. It should be very clear how these graphs are drawn. But uh, before I start uh, jumping on the graphs, what I'll suggest is try to do these two numericals so that uh, you guys are awake. Otherwise, you'll sleep in the next 10 minutes. Okay. Try to do question number 5A part and question 5B part. You can start now. Do you have a mobile with you, Avantika? Yeah, okay, I'll yeah, yeah. I'll send the scan to you. If the meeting, hmm. uh, I'll close the meeting and restart the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Avantika, a balloon is inflated with helium gas at room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and one bar. When its initial volume is 2.27 liter and allowed to rise in air. As it rises in the air, external pressure decreases and the volume of the gas increases till finally it bursts when external pressure is 0 0.3 bar. So, let us uh, note the conditions. 25 degrees Celsius and uh, 1 bar. Initial volume is uh, 2.27 liters. It ri starts rising. When it starts rising, see, please try to understand what happens when he starts. this balloon starts rising. Let us try to understand. So, this is, uh, say, surface. Now, when the balloon is at surface, uh, approximately around uh, 10 kilometers of uh, uh, atmosphere is above the above the balloon. One thing I need doubt about this. One thing I need doubt about this. So ten kilometer of atmosphere is above the surface of Earth, approximately, approximately. So the balloon is here. When the balloon is here, the pressure is uh, one bar. Now when it starts to rise. The pressure, let us assume that uh, the balloon reaches here. Now here, only this much amount of uh, atmosphere would be above the balloon. So that is why the pressure would be lesser. So we go down. So the pressure has decreased. What is the limit at which the volume of, uh, what is the limit at which the volume of the balloon can stay inflated? Now see, they haven't talked much about the temperature. Because they haven't talked much about the temperature, 
so what we will assume is that the temperature would remain to be constant and when the temperature remains constant which law is applicable boyle's law is applicable so bt bt ka bike so boyle's law is applicable and what is boyle's law yes so as per boyle's law as per boyle's law the number of moles and the temperature should remain constant so p1 v1 would be equal to p2 v2 any doubt now the this is condition 1 so this is p1 this is v1 this is p2 and this would be v2 any doubt see so what is the limit at which the volume of the balloon can stay inflated see it bursts at 0.3 bar so that is why whatever volume you get here would be the answer any doubt so 1 bar into 2.27 liter is equal to 0.3 bar into v2 so if you solve this for v2 your v2 would be 2.27 upon 0.3 so we apply p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so 1 bar into 2.27 liter is equal to 0.3 bar into v2 what we need to remember is that this v2 would come in liters because this bar and this bar will get cancelled so no unit conversion is required so v2 would be equal to 2.27 liter upon 0.3 and if we solve this this is the answer that we will get 7.567 liters and which is the final answer so see what we need to understand is because they haven't talked anything about the temperature so we'll assume the temperature to be constant but try to compare this question with this question at 25 degrees celsius 760 mm hg gas occupies 600 ml of volume they are what will be the pressure of the height where temperature is 10 degrees celsius and volume of is 640 so if you see here the pressure is changing the volume is changing as well as the temperature is changing all the three are changing but if you observe that the number of moles remains the same that's what we have any doubt so you need to be very careful whether one thing is constant or all the three are changing but if the question can't be done so for example in this case they haven't talked anything about the temperature in the second state so that is why we just assumed that the temperature was constant any doubt mr vandhi any doubt no no so let us look at the b part syringe has a volume of 10 cm cube at a pressure of 1 atmosphere if you plug the end so that no gas can escape so no gas can escape what this means is that the number of moles or the mass of the gas has been kept constant this is what they mean by this and the push the plunger down what was the final volume to change the pressure to 3.5 atmosphere now they haven't talked anything about the temperature because they haven't talked about the temperature we will assume that the temperature is constant is someone think any doubt no and when the temperature is constant mr vantika which law is applicable boyle's law yes boyle's law so number of moles and temperature is constant boyle's law is applicable p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 therefore p1 one atmosphere into v1 10 cm cube is equal to p2 what is p2 3.5 atmosphere v2 v2 is unknown so v2 would be equal to 10 cm cube upon 3.5 this is one thing are we clear yes sir see in these questions you what you need to understand is that this atmosphere atmosphere will get cancelled whatever answer you will get would be in terms of cm cube so your answer would be 10 upon 3.5 10 upon 3.5 is equal to 100 upon 35 this would be 5 to the 0 5 7 the So this would be approximately three centimeter cube. Approximately three centimeter cube. Does anyone think any doubt? No. So basically, why we wanted to do these two? Why we wanted to these? Why we wanted to do these two numericals A and B? Just to understand how what kind of questions are asked in the exam. Did you find them difficult? No, sir. Yeah, they are pretty easy to understand. Not uh, much of yeah. an issue is there. Okay. So we have understood the definition of Boyle's law. We have understood uh, how to do numericals of uh, Boyle's law. Now let us try to understand this part of Boyle's law, the graphs. See, this is the first graph uh, that we should be very clear. See what Boyle's law says is that uh, 
the product of pressure into volume is constant any doubt about this no okay now just copy what i am writing here okay, by x then i can put the vari various values of x here and then i can find the values of y any doubt no and when i start plotting the graph this is how this is how the plot looks like any doubt no so basically whenever you see a graph like this whenever you see a graph like this this graph is x into y is equal to some constant any doubt no so this is what our this is what our boyle's law requires that the product of these two the pressure and volume should be constant and that is why this kind of graph has been taken any doubt no what we need to understand is that on whole of this line the temperature has been constant so for example if this line is at 25 degrees celsius then maybe at 30 degrees celsius maybe at 30 degrees celsius the graph would be something like this the shape would be the same but the line will shift any doubt about this no so we should be very clear about this because these are the kind of questions which are asked in competitive exams any doubt no okay now there is also a different kind of graph that you can see and this is how it looks like let us try to understand this also so pv is equal to constant so pressure can be written as 1 upon k into uh, i'm sorry can be written as k into 1 upon v any doubt no let me compare this with y is equal to m into x any doubt no mr cb do you remember what m was so mr cb has given the right answer that is if y is equal to mx then m is called the slope of the graph any doubt avanti no now if you remember your class 10th uh, maths this y is equal to mx used to look something like this any doubt no now what i do is the law is the same pressure is equal to constant into 1 upon v the law remains the same i'll do a small manipulation what i'll do is i'll say this is my y this is my m and this 1 upon v is my x have you understood what i've done kind of okay let us like see what he has done so that you understand this in detail so this is my y axis any doubt about this no this is my x axis any doubt about this no this is my y axis this is my x axis any doubt no so this y can be written as mx something like this this would be a straight line any doubt no see any straight line which is passing through the origin let us try to understand any straight line any straight line that passes through the origin can be written as y is equal to mx are we clear about this yes yeah. this is what we have learnt in maths this is what we have learnt in maths now all i am saying is that my formula is this i manu manipulate it like this any doubt no and when i compare these two what i find is that let me write it like this y is equal to m into x when i manipulate like this i understand that if y is equal to p then x would be 1 upon v have you understood it now yes so that is why if you see in your book this is the graph that they are showing you and this is a isothermal that is why they have written that at a certain temperature this is true any doubt about this no fir se dekhiye this is my y this is my x but my x now is 1 upon v and this is a isothermal which is applicable at a certain temperature only any doubt no when i change the temperature please try to understand when i change the temperature basically what i am doing is i am changing the slope of the graph any doubt no because again if we refer to class 10th mathematics what do we understand is that this line this line this line the equation of this would be y is equal to m1 x this would be y is equal to m2 x and this would be y is equal to m3 x 
the general equation remains the same because if pass through the origin but the slope changes any doubt this is one thing no it should be very clear about the graphs because this would be very helpful for us in the uh, competitions